Well, Bill James made his mark in the 1970s and 1980s with his baseball abstracts. If you're uh, fans of baseball, as Paul and I are, you know about runs created and range factor and secondary average, all created by Bill James. In 2006, Time magazine named him one of the 100 most influential people. He currently serves as senior advisor on baseball operations for the Boston Red Sox. And now Bill James has turned his focus to crime. His new book, Popular Crime. Reflections on the Celebration of Violence. Bill, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me on, sir. Yeah, I really enjoyed going through the book last night. And I want to start with um, The Boston Strangler because uh, I remember being a freshman in college seeing the movie with Tony Curtis about Albert DeSalvo. And I always thought that was a solved crime. Um, The movie cemented it in my mind, but it it wasn't a solved crime, was it? The uh Albert Salvo was never charged, convicted, tried, or put on trial, or, or accused legally of any crime in connection with the Boston Stranglings. He, he was convicted on television, he was convicted in the movies, but uh, he was never convicted in fact. And once you actually reach the point of asking what is the evidence against him, what reason do we have to believe that he actually did, committed this crime, it is astonishing how thin the case really is. And they had kind of like a Warren Commission uh, also in that case, and F. B. F. Lee Bailey was young at that time in his career, and he, he took the case for, for high-profile reasons, right? The uh, F. Lee Bailey got involved in the case, and it was Bailey more than anyone else who started the whole Albert DeSalvo committed this crime uh, uh, Perception. The uh, uh, Bailey believed that that DeSalvo was telling the truth, and uh, because DeSalvo wanted people to believe he did it, right? Right. Mm-hmm. But DeSalvo was crazy. I mean, this a a a psychiatrist who knew DeSalvo very well testified under oath that DeSalvo was delusional and incompetent to stand trial before DeSalvo began talking about the Boston strangling case. <laughs> uh, so he, he there there was there was there were problems with the salvo long before that he was ever connected with the case it it just goes to show you through movies and popular culture what people can end up thinking you also talk a lot about a guy named carol carol chessman who was in the 50s uh, he was on the cover of Time magazine. There were ballads written about him. He wrote a couple books in prison before being executed. Uh, one of those books was made into a movie. Why was his case so important? The uh, Chessman was a very unusual and very talented man. The, uh, uh, he was an ex- exceptionally good writer, uh, and his books became popular. His first books became popular just because they were very compelling. Uh, also, I mean, Chessman sort of invented the death row lawyers game. He was he was not an attorney, but he turned down the help of attorneys, and uh, by his extraordinary legal creativity, he was able to prevent himself from being executed for uh, a period of several years. And uh, by entangling his appeals, he would mm-hmm. he would file an appeal in this court and a related appeal in that court and a third appeal in that court, and he would argue, you can't execute me until I, all of my appeals have been resolved. I, I, he basically had to figure out, as the clock was running, how to keep the state of California from executing him, yeah. which he did brilliantly and uh, became a national figure. Up to a point when he was executed, uh, one of the few, I think you said, executed for a crime less than murder. One of the last, right. Yeah, I mean, many yeah. people in this country have been executed for crimes short of murder, but he was one of, one of the last. Mm-hmm. Our guest is Bill James, author of Popular Crime, Reflections on the Celebration of Violence. Bill, um, you know, there's, there's a, mo- a book that I'm reading called The Sociopath Next Door. After all of your research and writing, do you have some broadened view of the capability that people have to murder? Well, uh, yeah, I think... I have not read The Sociopath Next Door, so I can't comment on that. Mm-hmm. The, uh, I think most people under the right set of stresses, under the wrong set of stresses, are capable of horrific acts. And I think that that's one reason why we're so fascinated by these. Uh, and and what, though I'd liken it to this, that, that all, almost anybody who becomes, a, uh, who becomes a heroin addict will, in fact, commit a murder to get a heroin. Uh, and almost any of us can become a heroin addict if we go walk through the wrong set of doorways. Mm-hmm. So it's just a question of uh, really all of us are capable of committing those those very bad actions if we walk far enough 
down the wrong pathway in life. Right. You advocate in the book for small prisons. Talk about that. Well, we've, we've become f- fond of building these huge, horrific prisons that are ruled by gang violence, and, and it's not... It's not in our best interest to do that. And I'm, not, I'm not a person who believes that you can fix criminals. You, you can't fix criminals, but the, uh, you can help some people who make mistakes early in life to get back onto a more productive pathway. The, uh, and we're not doing it. We're wasting a lot of money protecting by, by building prison systems that in essence assume that everybody is the worst type of criminal and warehousing prisoners under conditions that uh, are Certainly, harsher and yeah. stricter and mm-hmm. more expensive than is necessary. Right, right. Uh, Bill James with us, his book, Popular Crime. Uh, you're a statistics guy. Did you, uh, in your research, find uh, any correlation or fluctuation of crime rates, uh, anything statistically that popped out at you? Well, it's not a book about statistics, but I will say this. One of the arguments of the book is that the explosion in crime rates from the 1960s to the 1970s resulted from very poor supervision of the system by the Warren Court. Uh, The Warren Court was responsible almost directly for the unnecessary murders of thousands of people by by doing a poor job of supervising the system. There's a statistical argument that's made against that, which is that this was caused by a, a demographic shift in the population of uh, which made the population younger and more in the mm-hmm. crime prone ages, but that argument doesn 't stand up if you look at it if, if you look at, if you actually run the numbers, you realize that the demographic shifts can 't possibly have cre- have led to an explosion of crime rates anything like what actually occurred right your favorite uh, book about crime what is it well, in Cold Blood, which is, a, you know, it's a, it's a cliche to say so, but it is the best book I've ever written about crime. Number two on the list, probably a, a book called uh, Final Verdict by a oh, woman yeah. named Adele Rogers St. Mm-hmm. John. Mm-hmm. How about the, movie? Uh, best crime movie? I, I would say uh, The Onion Field. Oh, fantastic. I uh, just interviewed Ted Danson not long ago. How about uh, TV series? The, uh, uh, we have to be The Fugitive. Oh, yeah, grew up with it. Last question, Bill James. Uh, Paul and I are huge baseball fans. Who's going to be in the World Series this year? The uh, uh, well, <laughs> I can't give you an unbiased answer to that one. So well, I know you're a Red Sox fan, but uh, take a stab. Uh, Red Sox against the Phillies. All right, you got one of them right. Go Phils. <laughs> hey, Bill James, author of Popular Crime: Reflections on the Celebration of Violence. Honored to talk to you, sir. Congratulations on the book. Thank you. Okay.